I think I'm just going to get started. Um, I wanted, I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna share a little bit, but I invited Pastor David and Pastor Laura to um, share with me today because um, we really just wanted to start to cast vision for 2020, um, really coming into agreement that it is a new season. And I think it's been a new season. We've been sensing, um, we've been sensing endings. Um, things for people have been ending, jobs have been ending, people have been moving, um, there's things where we're gearing up for the new, and sometimes we don't, we don't always know what the new is. Um, sometimes it, there's an ending that starts to come, and things are stirring in us, maybe a restlessness, maybe a little bit of um, this, the thing that I've been doing has been an old wineskin, and um, there's something that you, we just are, seeking the Lord for more. And um, one time we had Pastor Maurice McCarthy preach a sermon on um, grace in the hallway or something in the hallway. And I think we really, there's a time maybe for some of us that it's, it's a hallway. We're in a season where um, we know there's a, a change coming. There's, um, there's, there's just, I, 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 it's hard to explain. It's so hard to explain when you don't know what maybe is coming. Or maybe you do have a sense, and we've been talking about vision, and you've been starting to write vision, and, um, and you've really been uh, getting this sense from the Lord that there is something new, and you're starting to write these ideas and desire and um, change is, is stirring in your heart. And we just really want to, I just want to speak that out. I want to be speaking it out and declaring it related to missions, we're related to the local ministries that we uh, support, that we're gearing up for, for new things. There are going to be things, even in the ministries here, that feel like they're changing. Uh, one of the ministry leaders I was talking to recently himself said, we're in transition. Um, you know, and I know that, they, that some of the leaders here are seeking the Lord for what the new thing is. And um, recently I've, been, I've kind of been paying attention to uh, Lou Engel, and um, some of the leaders, Lou Engel was somebody that was a leader for us when I was in my 20s. We, we went and did um, a, a day of prayer and fasting in Nashville, um, did something called The Call. It was 7707. It was a great group of friends that went. And at that time, in that season, there was a big shift. We, we felt like um, we had been fasting and praying and seeking the Lord and kind of in my 20s starting to think about um, okay, what, what, is, what is the new thing? But we were seeking the Lord for what that was, and we, we went. It was a summer. We took three vans uh, to Nashville of our friends, and Hector went, and I know Laura went. She went with uh, different folks. But that, that time was a marking point um, for me, actually. I transitioned from working in a social work job to taking the um, lead of Aviv as we were gearing up to, to launch Aviv. Pastor Ron had the vision to um, put a coffee shop into Bethel and to do something new. And um, while he was doing that, I had been starting to get vision in our prayer room where we met um, in the prayer room to uh, be seeking the Lord and praying. And, and ideas started to come for me about doing a coffee shop. Um, I didn't drink coffee <laughs> at the time. I, it was like this, in our prayer and seeking the Lord for something new, in, in a restlessness of we wanted to serve the Lord and do what he, we felt he was calling. I, we were in a prayer room on a Friday night. We started getting ideas about having a coffee shop on East Avenue and doing something that would be a contender with so many bars that surround us. We wanted to do something that would be um, fresh and alive and safe, um, you know, we, we started writing it down. I remember writing it down on big post-its on the wall in the prayer room and, and really just um, thinking, well, okay, we want to do, do a new thing. Well, they started to, if you remember the, I don't know if you remember the foyer out there, but it was just blank. In fact, that's where we would have had our missions fair. We would have had tables out there. It was kind of old gray carpet and white walls, and we would have had tables out there. And, um, and new vision started to come. And uh, they, you know, we put in bright colors and fresh paint and um, new things. And it, and it was starting, it was a big change. I don't, it, you know, things have been there now for 12 years and it doesn't feel like there was a big change, but at the time it was. And we said yes to the Lord. And um, 
I said yes to taking on Aviv, even, even um, when I didn't think at the time I thought, well, this isn't exactly what I was thinking from doing a coffee shop. I remember thinking, um, Pastor Ron, you had great ideas, but some of them sounded churchy. And I thought, well, I don't know if I want to be so churchy. Um, but but we, there were some things in that change and in that process as we were seeking the Lord um, of just uh, allowing the vision to unfold, allowing the vision to meld with the ideas and the vision of other people, and and really starting to say yes to the Lord and make those steps forward. And so as we're headed into 2020 and with our connections in the nations, with our connections with the local ministries, we really do, we want to declare that it's a new season. I started to say, Lou Engel, now the call has transitioned to being the send. And the send has a focus for preparing and equipping for missions to send out into the world to proclaim the gospel the message today go into all the world and it it is um a, a transition the call to the send to answering the call of jesus to go out into all the world and to speak it lou lou has said it's the decade of jesus the evangelist and i i believe that's the truth it is the decade of jesus the evangelist and i believe he's going to reveal himself as jesus the evangelist to us and i believe we're going to get a stirring in our hearts that even a, a passion for speaking out the good news of the gospel of jesus and we we really just want to be proclaiming that now and even casting vision for what that is um I just want to read in Amos. If you'll turn with me in Amos. I don't have it quite there. I should be right there. Um, well, I'm going to read it from my notes. Amos 9, verses 13 through 15 says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman and the planter by the one treading grapes. I think those days are about here. We're on the cusp of a great revival and missions revolution. This is my words. And what that, that scripture is saying is that the reaper is going to overcome the plowman. Where we've been sowing, where we have been faithful for years in the tasks and the work that has come, there is a harvest that's coming. There is a harvest that's ripe now. And our call is to get ready to reap the harvest. And, I, and, and we got to get ready. It really can't be business as usual. Uh, things are, things are um, the, the world is, is hungry and seeking the Lord, and we want to, we want to get into the stream with the, the Lord. We want to get into the river with the Lord to, to do what he's doing. There, uh, there are people who are being saved um, just in dreams. Uh, you can't, the, the revival that's happening in Iran right now among the people is, is amazing. The Middle East is ripe for the harvest. Africa is ripe. The, you know, even I uh, was reading statistics that um, one in three people who said, say that they are non-believers in America uh, would say yes to being invited to church. I don't know if that's the same statistic that Pastor Ryan said, um, but 34% of, of non-believers think there's something more out there. 34% of, of people who are seeking or think there's something more would be willing to come to church if we ask. And, and we just need to be ready for that which the Lord is asking us to do. The Lord of the harvest, Jesus the evangelist, is inviting us in to partner with him in this new decade. So I just want to share that. I wanted to, um, I wanted to invite Pastor Laura to share because it's... It's twofold, too. It's Jew and Gentile. And the, the connection of the nations is um, there's a fullness to it that Laura explains so much better than I could. <laughs> well, as um, we cast the vision um, for being sent ones, and we've been equipped, we're, we continue to be equipped, but it's so that we can be sent. It's a big picture, and God is a God of process. And, um, you know, it's interesting as Katie used that Amos p passage, right before those verses in Amos, um, it says, on that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, 
and repair its damages, and I'll raise up its ruins, and I'll rebuild it as in the days of old, <clears throat> that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, say, says the Lord who does this thing. You know, in the, in the body of Christ, um, we have been familiar with the Great Commission because we've heard it a lot. And again, I'm just going to refer to two specific passages in the New Testament where Jesus spoke to his disciples right before he ascended. It's very familiar, Matthew 28. Um, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. Also in Mark, there's another version of what his great commission was, and it says, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not will be condemned. And all these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them, and they will lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. So we have like these two um, parts to this commission. There's the individual to individual, but in Matthew, it's about nations being reached. And so this is a big vision from God, and I think in the church, we've often thought like the Great Commission kind of started with Jesus. Well, it didn't. It's obviously started with God. He's the Ancient of Days. He's the Eternal Father. It started a long time ago in his heart. Long before humans were on the earth, there was a rebellion in heaven, and things went out of order in the, the perfect creation that God had created when Lucifer rebelled and things went into chaos. But then God, in that time, has this plan to create humans, and it, this, this whole thing unfolds. We know the story in Genesis, how the, there was um, this place, Eden, that was a boundary area, and east in Eden, he formed, this, well, he formed this man, put him in this garden that was east in this region of Eden, and basically the, the command was to be fruitful, multiply, to take dominion, and subdue the earth. So it's this mandate of God. He wants everything that has been lost to be restored. He wants that which is out, out of order to be brought back into order in alignment with him and his love. And so what this does is we have to see it, this call that God is giving to us. It's a big call. It's been unfolding through the ages. We've been put on the earth at this time with the unique giftings, the unique identities of each one of us. And as we come to Jesus and open our hearts to him, we become a new creation in Christ, and we are gifted to enter in and become one of God's ambassadors to bring about this restoration that's been in God's heart all along. It's a big vision. But as a result of that, we have to understand it's, it's a connected kind of thing that God's been unfolding through history. And one of the pieces to it, and I'm just interested to see what God's been doing with our whole congregation in this season, getting us ready to launch us in this new time. We've all just kind of completed those who did the 40-day prayer time. We've completed this draw, the circle. And I don't know about you, but every time I read this book, I'm stirred afresh with the fact that God has a unique calling on every one of our lives, but it's birthed in prayer. And it's interesting, even in the Amos passage, that the tabernacle of David, it's being raised up, that's fallen. Um, God sees that he's got this plan and it moves forward and then there's resistance and sometimes things get out of order. He comes again with a fresh move and it, it moves his covenant plan forward. In order to really understand that we're sent ones, we have to understand that God has made a covenant and he's made a covenant with all the earth. He's made a covenant even with himself to fulfill what he's promised that he'll do. But we know as it's been rolled out in history that he found people who were willing and faithful to step in. Noah was one of them. We read about how God made a covenant 
with Noah. But then later, not that much later, we see that there's Abraham. And Abraham was found faithful. He was a friend of God. And that he becomes this point person. And, and God says, through your descendants, um, I'm going to bring the light to the whole world. We're going to, it's through your descendants. And so we see it unfolding. Even to Abraham, he told him that he was making him a father, not just of his family line, but of many nations. And so it's this covenant plan that's been coming through history. And, um, and then, of course, Moses, and on through the prophets, and then Jesus, who's born a Jew um, in a Jewish family, light of the world and the, the promised Messiah. And then as the early church is birthed, it's birthed really within the Jewish community, as Pastor David mentioned last Sunday. Um, but then the Lord shows them, no, you know what? It's, it's beyond you. And we read in the book of Acts um, that they gather everybody back to a Jerusalem council in Acts 15. Again, the tabernacle of David is mentioned. It's about, and, and there's this thing because um, the church has been moving out, and now all of a sudden Gentiles are being saved, and these are pagan people that don't know the law, they don't know the teachings of Torah, and there's all this confusion about what do we do now? This isn't the way we thought the plan was going to work, but God calls them back to the place of remembrance and studies them, realigns them, and then we see that huge thrust into the Gentile nations that came through the Apostle Paul and the others that went, of which we are all recipients. And we have, but there's this returning to covenant again and again. And it's interesting that as we think about going to the nations, I remember years ago, it, I don't know how long ago it was, it was probably 15 years ago, that we had a morning prayer meeting very early in the morning that would meet in here and pray for the nations. And um, it was just a small group. But I remember one morning looking up at the flags of the nations, and the flag of Israel jumped out. And I heard the Lord say, it all goes back to Jerusalem. It all goes back to Zion. And at the time, I was kind of, you reach the nations through, basically through Israel. It was the, was the message that I got, and I was confused by it. But then as I began to study it, I realized that's it. It's, a, it's an alignment. It's a point. We, we go back and we remember what God's been doing through history. And, you know, the interesting thing is that there are those that believe that that land of Israel, as well as some of the other Middle East, was all part of the original Eden. So you see, it's, God cares about the land. And he cares about people, and he cares about the nation groups. And he's interested in all of creation being redeemed and restored. And that is our call. It's a big call, but we're all uniquely created to be a part of that call. And we have different giftings. So when we send people, it's not always just to be like a preaching missionary necessarily. It might be that we'll be sent into the nation because we have technological um, abilities and we're going to start a water system. Or we might, it, it might be that we're going to go in the entertainment um, industry just to bring a creative flow into a nation, but it's, it's a redemptive work that brings the glory of God. So we have to think outside of the box as we approach this new season. And I, I do appreciate this book for what it presented. We realize that the call it is birthed out of this place of prayer with God. It's birthed out of a very personal place. But then we take what God has given us, and we have this assignment, and we go. Now, another thing I'm going to say just before I end, it's really important for people to realize we're all called. It's not just a few people that go to the nations. This call is for everybody who's opened their heart to Jesus. We're all called to go to the nations. And some of us may not go physically, but we're called to hear what God is saying. And Lord, how do I help to send the good news of your love and your healing power? How do I help in this? And we do it through prayer. Sometimes we do it through the work we do here so that someone can carry it. Sometimes it's financially. Sometimes it's just supporting the teams that go. And, and it, but it, we all have been called. And we know the order is we start here, we move out. 
um, that's in scripture too. Jesus talks. You start in Jerusalem, move to Judea, Samaria, into the uttermost parts of the earth. So it's all a part of his plan. But this new season, as we step into it, we need to see the bigger vision. And folks, don't rule out the fact that God might want you to go on a team to the missions uh, field, to some, some nation. Um, you know, you can think, oh, I'm too old to do that, or, oh, I'm too young, or I don't have any money, or whatever. Get a passport and be ready, because when God has an assignment, he'll provide, and, and ramp up your faith. Ramp up. We move by faith, not by fear. We, we move beyond the boundaries. That's what this is all about, what we read. We move beyond boundaries of what we can see. And we've got to know God, and we've got to know when he says do something, whoa, it's way bigger than I can imagine. But God, I'll, I'll start with my little step. And God will move us, and he will provide, he'll connect us divinely, he'll show us the doors to walk through. So nobody's left out of this. We're all included. Thank you, Pastor Laura. Um, I want to... I want to kind of wrap things up and, uh, and conclude because I want to give you time to go over to the tables, the missions tables. Um, the different ministries and, and missionaries are, are, uh, have literature out there. There are, there are things that are actually being sold that are going to support the ministries and missionaries that we support. So I want to give you an opportunity to do that. But uh, I want to, want to just encourage, I want to declare, I want to dec declare some things because I think I think sometimes when we hear things often, our senses can, can become a little bit dull to those things that we hear often. Like we've been teaching around here that every member is a minister. We know this because we talk about this all the time. Corinthians, Corinthians talks about, you know, there, there, are, there are many parts. There are many members to those parts, but it's, but it's, but it's one body. And, and, we, and we teach those things. But I, I want you to understand the season that you're in. It's, it's, a very, it's a very unique season. While God has always used the individual to minister to friends and family, I mean, your, 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 your most effective and productive sphere of influence are the people that you're directly connected with. You know this because you've seen the fruit of that. Um, you, you pray for family members and they get, they, they get saved. You, you pray for friends and they get, they get healed. So there's always been that personal ministry. But we are in a unique season of time when it was declared that we're in a new era it means that there's there's a shift that happens in all in all shift you know for god's sons and daughters even if, if it's an uncomfortable shift is a good shift like katrina and, and paul they're, they're they're experiencing the shift while there's grief in that it's it's a good one it's it's a healthy one there's going to be a renewed focus it's a completely different focus for her now than was before well, it's the same for all of us. While we may not be relocating, we may not be leaving work to take care of kids, um, we may not be geographically moving to a different place, while, while it, it, from, a, from a tangible standpoint, you know, something that you can feel and touch, it may not look like something significant, but understand that it's significant, that we're entering in a new era and things have changed. One of the things um, this... Uh, it was called the call, and now they call it the send. And there are eight different, very significant, huge ministries that are beginning to unite, to create a united front. And really what it's doing is trying to raise up the saints because it's going to be a saints movement. You know, they talked about when, uh, when Billy Graham had passed away, multiple of these leaders as they were interceding, um, they were interceding beforehand, but they were, they were woke, woken up before they heard the news. They sensed something shifted in the spirit, and they're all talking about how there's a shift that happened when Billy Graham passed away. There, there was a time where those big conventions and conferences and crusades were necessary, and they were important, and God moved through them, through his grace, and many people were saved. There are probably many people in this room that were saved through a Billy Graham crusade. I know Nick Costello, I don't know if he's here, but Nick Costello went to a Billy Graham crusade, and that's where things completely changed for him. So, there's, so the fruit of that has been important, but this new era that we're moving in, it won't be the one-person ministry. It will be the ministry of the saints. And I, I, I shared a prophetic word, and I don't do this very often. It was a, lot, it was a while ago. I don't remember 
but, but I felt like the season we were moving into will be the season of the unnamed ministry, where, where there's going to be, there's going to be miracles, signs, and wonders, but no one person in no one ministry will get the credit for it. It'll be unrecognizable. People will just notice that there's a shift, there's change, there's miracles happening, but they won't know who prayed the prayer. They won't know what ministry was involved in it because, because everyone is called to the ministry. So I, I'm declaring that over you, that, that, that I believe something has shifted for all of us. You're all part of this house. You're all part of Bethel Christian Fellowship. Something has shifted whether you feel it or think it or not. And if you don't, if you don't begin to pray about it, I was thinking about this when we were, when, when we were um, worshiping. Um, we were talking about, Lord, raise up that fire, fire in me. I, I thought, you know what the kindling for that fire is? Prayer. The kindling is prayer. And as God, as you begin to pray and God gives you vision, you, you, you write down that vision, you begin to walk that out in obedience, and that's what raises that fire in you. The fire has to have a kindling. No one, a fire just doesn't start. It needs oxygen, it needs kindling, and, and it needs dry kindling. And I believe prayer produces that dry kindling. This, this new season that we're moving into, we can't move into it the way that we've moved into seasons before. You know, God, God, I thank God for his grace. We don't have to get it right perfectly all the time. We don't have to spend three hours in the morning for prayer. You know, God, just because of his grace and his love for us, just does stuff. But this new season we're moving into, it's, got, it's, it's a season of intentionality. It's not going to be a season where we could be presumptuous. It's a, it's, a new, it's a new thing. God's doing a new thing. You won't be able to move ahead the way that you've moved before because it's going to, you're going to need new tools. You're going to have to be equipped with new tools to move into this new season because God is raising the bar because we are in the age of the Gentiles when the Gentiles are going to be coming into the... There's this merging that's going to be happening all over the world and, and, and in the church, and, and that's... It's the creation of that one new man. And that doesn't happen until every member of the body is activated into their ministry. You need to be praying. What does that mean for me? What, what, what has to shift in me for the, to, to bring this about? And we will, exceed, we will succeed as a body fully into the things that God has called us into if everyone steps up to the plate. No one is insignificant in this thing. And I know a lot of people think that they're insignificant. They have insignificant vision, insignificant ministries, nobody knows me. That These ideas that God has given me that I've been thinking about, dreaming about, they seem silly to other people. You gotta put that, you gotta put that out of your mind. If God has given you that vision and God has given you that passion, I was just talking to somebody on the phone yesterday, some of the, some of the vision, the passion that, that God, God has given them, they, they probably, sometimes they think it's silly but other people think it's silly. You have to pursue that vision and that passion as ridiculous as it seems. As a matter of fact, I would say if it's more ridiculous, it's probably God. But, but that, is, that is this new era that we're moving into. So I, de I de just declare this over your people. Lord, I declare this over Bethel Christian Fellowship. I declare vision, revelation, dreams. Lord, creative ideas. Lord, you've given everybody gifting. You've given everybody, everybody talents that you're going to use, yes, yes, to equip this body, yes, to tool this body, but it's so much bigger than that. It's beyond these walls. It's out in the communities. It's in their workplaces. It's in the schools. It's in the social environments. Jesus, that's where you spent your time. That's where the majority of your miracles and signs and wonders were performed when you were out in the, in the highways, in the byways. This is, this is what I declare over your people, that wherever they go, wherever they walk, I mean, shadow, Peter's own shadow, he wasn't even conscious of it. Peter's own shadow brought healing because of you in him. Lord, I believe that people in the, are going to be in the checkout lines and they're going to have opportunities to pray for people. They're going to have opportunities to prophesy over people. This is the new season that we're in. And I pray, Lord, if our senses are dulled to that, that you would renew something in us, that, that you would cause our spirit to come alive, that, that we would realize that we are all called, we are all sent ones. That's what the Antioch church was. We are an Antioch church. We're an apostolic church. We are called to go out into the streets, into the highways, in the byways, and bring transformation to the city. And we just thank you, Father, that we get to do this, that we get to be involved in it. In Jesus' name, amen. David. Amen.
just before you do that, as Katie was speaking about the role of the evangelist today, I just had this sense. We're equipped to be an apostolic people, a prophetic people, a people who study to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth so we can teach others. And we're called to pastor and encourage and comfort and nurture one another. This is the decade, I believe, we're moving into of the evangelist in preparation for the greatest harvest the world has ever known. We are all called to be his evangelists. And God is going to raise up his whole body as those ministers that he's talking about. Get ready because a lot of people are going to come to Christ because of all of you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're going to be, be introducing some things at the beginning of the year that are going to give us opportunities that, as the body of Christ to be involved in things like that. We have some initiatives that we're gonna, that we're gonna present because some of you get really intimidated when you, when you hear the word evangelism and you think about sharing, sharing your faith. We're gonna be doing some equipping on how to do this from you know, relationally, relational evangelism. And uh, we're gonna be talking about a, a, lot of different, a lot of different tools that you can be equipped with that, so that you can be more effective in that as we move into the new year. I wanna close with just a few, uh, a few practical things. One, um, Mighty Oaks Warriors Foundation we support. It's a, an organization that um, has uh, rescued many vi- veterans from uh, wrecked marriages and suicide. 20, there are uh, around 20 suicides of veterans every day in this country. And in this ministry, Mighty Oaks Warriors Foundation, um, is, is a ministry that's on the front lines um, doing battle against, uh, against this. And they, they, every veteran that has been through their program, no one... There's never been one suicide or one divorce. And uh, there's, a, there's an initiative. They don't have a table, but I talked to, I talked to Chad yesterday. Um, they're, going, um, they're going before Congress on December 11th, and they're asking us to pray, but not just pray. See that website at the bottom, mightyoakswarriorsprograms.org slash coalition slash. They want you to go online. They need 10,000 signatures, and you can do this all online. 10,000 signatures. They're going before Congress, and it's a, non, it's a, not, it's a nonpartisan, is that correct? Yeah, non, nonpartisan initiative. They're, they're, they're petitioning the government to allow government funding for faith-based initiatives to help veterans. They are the most successful program out there. Everyone knows it. The military knows it. The military is actually sending men, active military men, directly to Mighty Oaks right now because they're one of the very few programs that actually work that's helping their veterans with their PTSD. They know this. So they have, uh, they have congressmen that are going with them, but they need 10,000 signatures. I'm asking for your help. All, you can read about the specifics of the initiative um, but it's a, a bill they want passed to allow uh, faith-based initiatives to get funding from the federal, federal government. Really, it, they're not even that concerned about the funding. They just want permission, you know, for these public organizations to be able to send men and, men and, uh, and women to Mighty Oaks Warriors Foundation. So if you can do that for me, take a picture of it. Um, it, it takes very little effort. I've been on the website. You go on the website, and you just fill in the blanks, and it's very, very short. And uh, he needs your help, and most of all, he needs your needs your prayers. Um, these uh, faith promise cards. How many do you see these? These are kind of fancy and nice, aren't they? Nice. Um, we we did this many many years ago. I can't remember when we did this, but I feel like we're moving into the season where we we really need to step out in faith. Um, so we've been on this prayer journey. We don't want you to fill this car, card out without spending some time in prayer. Because I'm praying that the Holy Spirit motivates this and directs you to, 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 to begin to, to commit to what you're going to give in missions. Because we all have big vision for the missions program here. We only support four international ministries and a lot of, a lot of local ministries. We want to double and triple that within the, within the next couple years. That won't happen without givers. It won't happen. We can't expand. We, we can't commit to other ministries and missions if we can't commit to them financially. So yes, most importantly, prayer, but be praying about about the amount that you would like to give towards missions. And I really want to challenge you. I mean, I appreciate the faithfulness of this congregation. We we could never do what, what, what we do now if it wasn't for your faithfulness. But God is expecting more out of all of us. 
And there are, min- there are ministries that I know God has wanted us to partner with that we have not been able to because the finances don't come in. We're having, we've been having some struggle supporting what we do, the missionaries and mission ministries that we support now but we just we take a step of faith we've committed to this we're, we're, we're believing you and God and, and God provides but this will really help us practically set the budget for for 2020 so I want you to take this card put your hands on it pray over it and to ask God um, what what you should what you should give and commit to um, all right so there's that and then lastly Go over to the tables. There's a lot of people that spend a lot of time to put this together. There's some uh, the local ministries here. Go over to the tables. There's things that you can sign up for and things that you can purchase. And uh, thank you all for uh, just who you are and uh, in, in all that God has in store in store for you. I'm just I'm excited to where 20, 2020 is 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 going. And uh, so thank you all and uh, and be blessed. Anything else? Any last comments? No. You good? All right. Lord, we thank you. Father, that we, that we get to give, that we get to be connected. You know, some of us, some of us has, has, have prayed, Lord, I, I just, I want to influence so many people. I want, to give, I want you to give me an opportunity to touch many lives. That's the beauty of supporting ministries and missionaries, that we don't have to go. We, we don't have to connect with all the hundreds and thousands of people that these ministries and missionaries touch, but we can support them in prayer, and that, that goes on our account. So, Lord, I thank you, Father, that we get to do that, that we, that we get to give and that we get to partner with ministries and missionaries that are doing incredible things locally and around the world. I just pray blessings over everyone in this room in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Get over to the tables.